Hi. Oh, we're getting into the good stuff. We're going to talk about expanded octets and Lewis dot structures. All right, now there are not a ton of compounds. I mean, relative to all of the compounds that we have, um, especially when you're looking at molecular compounds, there are not a lot of expanded octets. But, you know, what are you going to be tested on? The exceptions, especially in AP. Um, there's a really good chance that if you see a Lewis dot structure, um, that there's going to be an expanded octet involved. And I'll just tell you straight out, chemistry teachers love this. So let's talk about expanded octets. First thing that I want to show you, only our nonmetals that are in period three or greater will expand. So there's really not a lot of elements that can expand their octets. So check this out, here's my period three. And if we're looking at nonmetals, it's kind of this yellow color right here in the blue. You're only looking from phosphorus, this little pie shape, those are the elements that, that can expand. Your group, or excuse me, your period two, so carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, those cannot expand. And those can never expand. It's only this small group right there that can expand. So with that in mind, I have a few little notes for you. So um, as you're doing expanded octet, some rules to remember. So first, only elements in period three and greater, so down. They're the only ones that can expand. Next, only the central atom expands. The substituent atoms, the atoms that are attached to the central atom, they will always have an octet. So you give them exactly what they need to make an octet, and the element that takes the hit is the central atom, is the central atom that will expand. Now, what do I mean by expanding? So we have the octet, eight electrons around that central atom. Expanding means that central atom can either have 10 or 12. You'll never have more than that, and you won't have an odd number. So you can either expand to 12 electrons or 10 electrons. Um, and lastly, use expansion as a last resort. Remember the hierarchy, the overview of how you do Lewis dot structures. Number one, you always try and just share electrons using an octet. If that doesn't work, then you look for a coordinate covalent bond so that you can maintain the octet. And if you still cannot do um, a Lewis dot structure with a coordinate covalent, uh, then last resort, you expand that central atom to either 10 or 12 electrons. So uh, let's do some practice. Now these first two that I've put up here, uh, the boron trifluoride and the um, boron hy hydroxide, these are exceptions. They are exceptions to the octet rule. They don't expand, they actually have less, they have six. Uh, so I wanted to show this, this to you. Um, boron has three valence electrons, so it will share one electron with each of the fluorine, oops, the fluorine atoms, like that. So let's look at the fluorine. Great, two, four, six, eight. They all have an octet, but the boron only senses two, four, six. Um, the boron uh, hydroxide, same thing. It's going to share an electron with an oxygen, which shares with the hydrogen, and it will do that three times. So every oxygen looks great. It senses two, four, six, eight. The hydrogen has its two, but look at the boron, two, four, six. So you do have an exception to the octet rule where there's fewer than, um, than eight valence electrons and boron would be an, an example of that. Okay, so I wanted to be sure to show you the exception. Now, let's look at expanding. And oops, and I was very purposeful on how I chose these two. Let's start with the xenon tetrafluoride. Uh, kind of interesting, xenon tetrafluoride at least when my youngest was born, she was premature. Um, they use, or you can use xenon tetrafluoride to help little babies, premature um, babies, their little lungs develop. Not sure the mechanism, how that works, but kind of interesting. Who thought, mm, let's give babies xenon tetrafluoride. Maybe they'll breathe better. Amazing. <laughs> okay, xenon. Oh, we've got eight valence electrons. That's already a full octet. So I look at this to try and add for fluorine to it, there's no way that I can share with that xenon and maintain eight. No way, because it already has an octet. So then I go to my second idea, well, could I use a coordinate covalent bond? And the answer is no, because if I shared a pair of electrons with that fluorine, it would sense two, four, six, eight, nine. 
And remember the atoms that are attached to the central atom will always have an octet. So it's not going to expand to a nine. That means we've got to expand. So I'm going to share four electrons, one with each of our four fluorines. So let's share one electron with fluorine. Uh, so when we share that one electron, the fluorine still has its three lone pairs and it will sense two, four, six, eight. Great. Um, then we have our second fluorine, third fluorine, and the fourth fluorine. Okay, so all the fluorines are good. They've got their octet. Let's check the xenon. It senses two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, we fit within our parameters. Remember, xenon is going to be in period, let's see, three, four, five, the fifth period. So we know it can expand. Um, the substituent atoms have their octet, and the xenon can expand to a 10 or a 12. This one expanded to a uh, 12, so we're good. Now, compared to this, we're going to do a xenon tetraoxide. So let's do our xenon in the center again. Uh, we've got our eight valence electrons. Okay, <laughs> there's no way I can do regular sharing in order to, uh, with a, a noble gas, for it to maintain that eight. Um, so can't do regular sharing. Question number one. Question number two, can we do a coordinate covalent bond? Well, oxygen, as you'll recall, has six valence electrons. So it can do a coordinate covalent bond. I've got four of these. So the oxygen will move in and say, hey, let's share, but I won't give you anything. Those two electrons from xenon become the bond. The xenon shares both of those electrons with the oxygen, and the oxygen didn't have to share any of its valence electrons. So the oxygen senses two, four, six, eight, perfect. And that's what happens with every one of these. There's a coordinate covalent bond between each of the four oxygens. Again, those two electrons share, they become the bond, and the oxygen has its original six valence electrons that didn't have to share. So every oxygen, two, four, six, eight, woohoo! Look at this xenon, two, four, six, eight. It didn't expand, wow. And it's because we could use a coordinate covalent bond. The reason why I chose this is students will see noble gases and right away go, oh, it already has an octet, it has to expand. Pause, if you can do a coordinate covalent bond, do it. And there's a possibility you could maintain the octet around the noble gas. Let's do one more. I actually will do two more uh, to practice this. So this is going to be an I3 minus. This was on an AP test a couple of years ago. I3 minus. So iodine has seven valence electrons. Okay, I know that I'm gonna to have to have one iodine in the center. So we're gonna have an iodine as our central atom. Now, I'm thinking, can I share two iodine just regular sharing to have an octet? And the answer is no. Now I could do one iodine right here and I'd have my I2, my diatomic um, element I2. Yeah, great. But if I shared another electron, we would, um, or if I shared another iodine, no. <laughs> I've gone beyond the octet. So I know that I can't do regular sharing on this iodine because it only needs one more electron, but I've got two iodine that I have to share. So then I go to my second question. Can I do a coordinate covalent bond? And the answer is no. Remember, the atoms attached, substituents, have to have an octet. If I share two electrons, if I do a coordinate covalent bond, share two electrons, that is going to give the iodine nine electrons, not eight. So that forces us of, oh, we are going to have to do an expanded octet. So what I do in this case, I just give the substituent atoms, the atoms attached to the central atom, I give them what they need. So I know one iodine, I'll put it here, one iodine needs one electron. So I'm going to share one electron here. I had one left over. So actually, I, I don't want to confuse you. Let me do that again. So here we have our iodine. Let's share one electron. Okay, that iodine is good to go. And I'm going to give the next iodine what it needs. Let's share one electron. Okay, so each um, substituent iodine, perfect. Two, four, six, eight. Now this iodine. Let's look at the atom of the electrons. 
So it has seven valence electrons. It shared one, two, and then we're going to have three, four, five, six, seven. So if we count around the iodine, it's got two, four, six, eight, nine. And notice there's a minus. So I'm going to put 10 right there so that we don't have a radical ion. We're going to have that lone pair. Now let us check that central atom. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. It expanded to 10. We're good. Iodine is in period five, and so no problem for that to expand. Now, a little reminder, this is an ion, so we put the whole thing in brackets with a minus sign. So again, going through the steps. I asked myself, can I do a regular octet? No way. Second, can I do coordinate covalent? No, iodine um, won't, it won't give it eight, it will give it nine electrons. So, okay, I'm going to expand the octet. Give the substituents what they need, and then you work out that central atom. So I figured out, I shared two electrons, I had five more electrons, added that negative, and wow, it expanded to 10, it was perfect. Let's do one more. We're going to do a sulfur tetrafluoride. Sulfur tetrafluoride. Sulfur will be my central atom, fewest electrons, and I've only got one of it. Um, and I have four fluorines that we have to share. So the first thing I think is, okay, sulfur, six valence electrons, it only needs two more electrons. That means it only needs two fluorine, but we've got four fluorine. So that tells me uh, I'm not going to be able to do a regular octet. So second question, can we do a coordinate covalent bond? The answer is no because fluorine has seven valence electrons. If we did a coordinate covalent bond, that sulfur would donate two electrons to the fluorine and put it from seven to nine electrons. That's not an octet, which means we've just got to expand that central atom. So I will give the attached atoms, those substituents, what they need. Each fluorine needs one electron. So let's go fluorine, fluorine, fluorine. Now, if you're concerned about how I'm drawing shapes, um, look at the video on Vesper, the valence shell electron pair repulsion, and it talks about shapes. If you're not sure how to draw the shape, don't worry about it. You're not being graded on shapes when you're doing Lewis dot structures. If you're doing Vesper, you'll be graded on shapes. Um, so don't stress, don't stress on that. You'll learn how to, how to draw the shapes. Okay, so each fluorine, fabulous. It is going to sense eight electrons. And I set it up that way. I shared one electron with each fluorine so it would sense two, four, six, eight. Okay, now let's look at the central atom, the sulfur. So it shared one, two, three, four. There's six valence electrons, so there's five, six. So we took care of all the valence electrons. Now let's check the sulfur. What does it sense? It senses two, four, six, eight, ten. So it expanded to an octet of ten. Okay, so there's a couple of examples. If you feel like you need to see some more examples, um, I have another video, just examples of expanded octet. Okay, you're doing good, follow the steps, remember those rules, you can do it, you'll be great, thanks.